Welcome to an all new episode of Tiger Tally. I'm Taylor Harrison. Auburn women's basketball traveled to Greenville, South Carolina on Thursday for the SEC tournament. Even after a halftime lead, the Tigers could not hold off Georgia from having a strong second half. Georgia defeated Auburn 56-52 in the second round of the tournament. With that loss, Auburn did not advance to the second round and finished their season with a 17-14 record. Men's basketball closed out their regular season Thursday, Saturday night in the Auburn Arena. The team faced Missouri, defeating them 89-78. Auburn swept the series and finished the season with 18 wins. It was great to see our seniors um, lead us to victory. I thought all three of them were engaged, um, particularly T.J. Dunnans, um, you know, demonstrating what he can do, the impact he can have in a game with his four steals and, and, and some of the plays that he made. And, um, and you could tell that the team fed off of him and obviously felt really good about the way he played with a little bit of freedom and, and um, he played hard. Um, I just came out just trying to have fun, play my um, best game, my best home, last home game. So I was just trying to have fun pretty much. Um, we knew last game they out-rebounded us, so that was the main point, just try to um, like just not let it happen again. That's the only reason that, um, it was a close game last time, because we got out-rebounded. We know we play them again uh, in, uh, on Wednesday. It's tough to beat a good team three times, um, and it'll be a lot to prepare for. We'll have to. Um, we did a lot of things that we thought we needed to do to win this game today. We didn't hold a lot back. Um, so it's going to be interesting to break this one down and see what else we got that we can that we can do to be effective. Um, for them to just come out hard, you know, we got to come harder. You know, we can't be lax when we go out there. So we just we gonna prepare. I think um, it's not it's not what they're gonna do. It's what we're gonna do. If we're gonna is we're gonna play defense. Like if we're gonna play defense consistently, if everybody gonna come down and rebound, help the bids out. Up next, Auburn plays Missouri again this Wednesday in the SEC tournament. Tip off is at 8:30 in the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. Football spring training is in full swing, or pads to be more literal. In just the third practice, the Tigers were in full pads practicing. Gus Malzahn says guys were flying everywhere. Also to note, John Franklin III practiced as both quarterback and receiver. As of right now, there are three other players in Auburn's quarterback competition. Sean White, Jared Sidham, and Woody Barrett. Auburn baseball is focused and on fire. The Tigers hosted Lipscomb for a three-game series at Plainsman Park. Auburn recorded two wins against Lipscomb to begin the series, but fell 8-7 in 10 innings in the final game Sunday evening. In the first game, Auburn shut out Lipscomb, giving the team its fifth shutout this season, which also leads the NCAA. They will go to bat next with South Alabama on Tuesday in Plainsman Park. It was run after run. Softball had another huge win Thursday night. The bats were alive early for Auburn as they scored 15 runs in the first two innings against Liberty University Thursday night. Carly Wallace and Haley Fagan got things started for the Tigers, hitting first inning home runs. Following the Fagan home run, Liberty University sent Chase Cassidy to the circle. Liberty would have four different pitchers pitch in this game, but Auburn was able to continue to score seven runs in the first inning. After Liberty was unable to answer to the Auburn scoring in the second inning, the Tigers came back to the plate and added eight more runs. Kennel Veach and Casey Cooper both hit home runs in the second inning. All nine stars for the Tigers scored in this game, which is the first time this has happened since the May 22, 2016 game against Jacksonville State. After the second inning, Liberty was able to keep the Tigers scoreless, but that wasn't enough. Auburn's Ashley Swindle and Jenna Abbott came to the circle and were able to keep Liberty off the scoreboard. Auburn would go on to defeat Liberty 15-0. Auburn and Liberty will be facing off again Friday night at 6 o'clock at Jane B. Moore Field. In Auburn, Meredith Brito, Eagle Eye Sports. The Tigers finish out the weekend in the Wilson Demarini Classic, winning all four games. In the latest rankings released today, Auburn remain at the number two spot in the nation. The number 18 Auburn Gymnastics team traveled to Missouri for the last SEC meet of the season. Auburn lost in another close score to Missouri. Up next, Auburn returns to the Auburn Arena for the last game of the season when they host Pittsburgh Friday night. 
Number four, Equestrian finished out the season over the weekend, going against the nation's top-ranked teams. First, Auburn traveled to number one Baylor and picked up a win and a tie break. Next, the team visited number two Texas A&M for the last game of the season, picking up one more victory to add to its record. Up next, the latest in national news. You're watching Tiger Tally on Eagle Eye TV Channel 6. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. A record many thought would stand to the test of time crumbled this weekend at the NFL Draft Combine in Indianapolis, courtesy of John Ross. The University of Washington wide receiver ran a 4.22 40-yard dash, breaking the combine record of 4.24 that was previously held by Chris Johnson in 2008. During his final year with the Huskies, Ross had 81 receptions for 1,150 yards and 17 touchdowns. John Ross was not the only player who impressed scouts during the weekend's NFL Draft Combine, as Miles Garrett had himself quite the workout. The Texas A&M star defensive end ran a 4.64 40-yard dash, point posed a 41-inch vertical leap, had a 10-foot, 8-inch broad jump, and bench pressed 225 pounds 33 times. Garrett finished among the top five in his position group at the Combine and is projected to go number one in the draft. Two former Auburn players also had impressive workouts at this weekend's Combine. Defensive lineman Carl Walson and Montrevious Adams. Lawson bench pressed 225 pounds 35 times, the most among all defensive linemen, and ran a 4.67 40-yard dash. Adams bench pressed 225 pounds 22 times and ran a 4.87 40-yard dash, the fastest among all defensive linemen weighing at at least 300 pounds. Switching over to basketball, Kevin Durant has been diagnosed with a left MCL sprain and is scheduled to be sidelined for four weeks before being reevaluated. The Warriors star became injured during the game last weekend against the Washington Wizards, and he was thought to have a hyperextended knee at the time. In Durant's absence, the Warriors have a 1-3 record. With the regular season quickly winding down for teams in college basketball, some teams have already clinched a spot in the NCAA tournament. Those teams include Florida Gulf Eagles, Jacksonville State Gamecocks, Wichita State Shockers, and Winthrop Eagles. Among those teams, the Gamecocks are the only ones making their first ever NCAA tournament appearance. Coming up, we go one-on-one -on -one with Auburn's basketball, Mustafa Heron and Jared Hopper. We'll be right back. I hope that you've been able to learn a strong work ethic surrounded by character, integrity, perseverance, so that when your one second comes, you'll be prepared for it. Chris Davis. 45, there goes Davis. Your one second, our one second is now. And our lives have been guided by the principles of one of the greatest academic institutions in the country, Auburn University. You're watching Eagle Eye TV, JJ Jackson here, fresh off the 23 point win over LSU. I'm here with Mustafa Heron and Jared Harper. Guys, how are you doing today? Doing good, what about you? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. Mustafa, doing well? Pretty good, how you doing? I'm doing well. Guys, let's start with how you got here. What drew you both to further your basketball career at Auburn? What made you commit here to play at Auburn? Oh, well, Auburn, that was um, one of the few SE school um, teams that were interested in me. It was also close to home, I'm about an hour, 20, hour 20 away from home, so my parents get to come out and support, my brother gets to come, mm -hmm. I even have time to go home sometimes. Mm -hmm. And Mustafa, what about you? What was it about Auburn that made you I was you just here? somewhere I was comfortable, feel like I can come here and get better, and then we had, you know, we had a good, rec <clears throat> good recruiting class coming in, so I mean, it's just somewhere that I knew we would win games. What's it like for both of you being a freshman backcourt in the SEC, such a good basketball conference? What kind of challenges, what, what, what is it like being that backcourt and both of you being a freshman? Well, also coming along with being a freshman, there are also a lot of other good freshman guards mm -hmm. in the conference. There's also some good older guards. So a lot of SEC is one of the most physical conference, conferences. So, you know, it's, it's physical. So mm -hmm. you have to be, be able to play with the strength of all the players, with the speed of everybody. Mm -hmm. 
Anything you'd like to add there, Mustafa? Um, he pretty much said it all. You know, um, I wanted to come to this conference just because of physicality. You know, I, I consider myself a pretty physical player, so I, I just I like banging and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So. So let's have some fun a little bit here. If you could both describe each other's game to someone who's never seen you play before. So, Jared, if someone's never seen Mustafa play, how would you describe his game? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess a little bit smooth. Okay. Calm, little. collected. Okay. Um, and kind of catch you off guard. Okay. Yeah, so Those things you don't expect. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what what is it about Jared's game that makes him so special? Describe Jared's game for us, Mustafa. Can I like describe it in like one play? Like, can I like be like a commentator? Go for it. All right. Let me think. Uh, <laughs> Fifteen seconds on the on the shot clock. Harper backs it out. He's got a man on the island. <laughs> one, two between his legs. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, pulls up in his face for a three. And yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't explain it in play, but no, nah, he just, I mean, he just scores. Uh -huh. Put the ball on the rim okay. at will. Get to the basket, shoot over defenders, plays a pick and roll well. I mean, just everything. Seeing both of you play so far this season, I think those were very accurate descriptions. So good job there, guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so I've got some superlatives for the team. And if you guys could both, whoever fits this category best on your team, just let me know. So we'll start here. Who's the funniest player on the team this year? Me, by far. Funniest. It's not even a question. <laughs> funniest. I either go him or Lorraine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go here. Who's the best dressed on the team? Me, me by far. Me. Both of you feel like you're the best dressed. I'm best dressed. Okay. Who has the best shoe game Me. on the team? Okay, <laughs> not even, no, no other. No questions. You two are the best shoe game. Okay. I like no, it. no, TD, T, Dunnis, TJ Dunnis probably. Has a good shoe game? He, he got the most Jordans. Okay. He's one, I'm two, and he's three. <laughs> no. Okay. Who is the best, we'll start with best, who's the best road trip roommate? Who's going to be clean, you know, not too crazy. When you guys are staying somewhere on the road, who, who do you want to be your roommate? TJ Lane. TJ Lane? Yep. And who's the absolute worst? Who's just a slob and, and just not? Is there anybody that fits that category? Oh, um, I mean, I think we only had one long road trip, uh -huh. and I don't think anybody was like all over the place. Okay, yeah. so so for the most part, everybody's clean. Mm -hmm. well, okay, that's yeah. good to hear. All right, who has the best Coach Pearl impression? When you guys are joking around in the locker room, does anybody have a particular <laughs> Coach Pearl impression that stands out? I think me. You do? Maybe. Can you give us an example of that? <laughs> Put you on the spot here. <laughs> I think Stock's got one. No. Stock's got one. I mean, now when he be in the game, he called the plays out. He be like, when he called cutters, <laughs> like he like he be real animated, like yeah. or like like I mean, he be sweating a lot. Okay. Yeah. So like, if you throw some water on me right now, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's the last one. Who is Coach Pearl's favorite on the team? Mm. You know, like the teacher's pet sort of thing. That you, is there anybody in particular that stands out as Coach Pearl's favorite? Mm. Maybe not so much. Nah. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Well, Jared. Nah. No. Mm -mm. The point guard. <laughs> the point no. guard. I like that. Okay. Well, Mustafa, Coach Pearl actually tweeted about you this morning. I don't know if you saw that, but um, he said Mustafa Heron has been one of the most productive, consistent, and efficient freshmen in college basketball. Huge upside because of his talent and discipline. How does that feel when you hear your coach praise you like that? Well, it feels good, but, um, you know, I just try to, I mean, I, I didn't even see that, so mm -hmm. I, I don't really pay that much attention to it. You know, I just try to keep working. Okay. Um, Jared, last year you were playing high school basketball in Georgia, and now you're the starting point guard at Auburn in the SEC. Uh, what game or what moment did you realize this season that, hey, I can be productive in this league? Oh, maybe our, our road trip in Connecticut. I had um, two good games against Oklahoma and UConn. And um, just with that, I, after that, I was SEC Player of the Week for the first mm -hmm. time, and I just noticed that I had the potential to do a lot. Okay, wonderful. Mustafa, being from Connecticut, what surprised you the most about the South when you moved to Auburn? It's Any big culture shock that stood out? The pace is so much slower okay. down here than it is back home. Interesting. It's a lot slower. Okay. Um, Jared, what kind of impact has Ronnie Johnson had on your career so far? An experienced guy that comes in, both of you new to the Auburn program, but what kind of impact has he had on your career? Well, before he came here, he's played four years of um, high division on basketball, so of course you can learn a lot from him. Mm -hmm. He's playing well right now, mm -hmm. obviously, doing a lot of things, so you can always 
just look at what he's doing to see what you can do mm -hmm. to do some similar things. Uh, when did you guys meet for the first time? Do you guys remember that? Was it during recruiting or do you recall Austin? when you, yeah. you and Jared you and Mustafa, when did you guys meet? Officially, was yeah. it Kentucky? Officially the All-Star game? Like when I actually first like. It was the official visit. That was before. That was before. That was before Kentucky, for real? Yeah. No. Official visit, that was in the fall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right, right, right. Yeah. And you guys feel like you hit it off ever since, been best friends since then? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, well, let's end on this. The regular season is coming to a close. What's it going to take for you guys to be successful in the upcoming SEC tournament? Um, we'll just keep pushing and win these um, last three games because mm -hmm. we want to put ourselves in the position to play in the postseason. Mm -hmm. Going into the, ter um, the SEC tournament, we want to be able to e eventually make a run in the SEC tournament, and our goal this whole season was to make it to the NCAA tournament. Okay. Anything you'd like to add there? You said it all. Okay. Lovely. For Mustafa Heron, Jared Harper, I'm JJ Jackson. You're watching Eagle Eye TV.